And this is a young lady that can really get downhill. I mean, she gets six free throw attempts a game. She gets off about 14 twos. She can also knock down a three, but look at those averages on the year. 21 points a game as a 5'8 guard. Six times, Tiffany, this kid's gone for 30 points in ACC play. She is tough to cover, hard to handle on the flip side. Sarah Ashley Barker from Alabama. Christy Curry knows she needs a big game from number three in white. Capable of doing it, an all-SEC performer. A lot of athletes on the floor right now in our second game here from Austin. Alabama in the white unis, guarded in gold for the Seminoles, and we are underway here from the Moody Center as Tania Latson, first team all-ACC selection, leaves it short. Sarah Ashley Parker and company trying to go up for that rebound. It's Michaela Timpson, and Timpson too strong as we take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Sarah Ashley Parker, certainly the pulse of this team, but how about Aaliyah Nye, one of the sharpshooters, great from long range, and Essence Cody inside, locking things down for the Crimson Tide, just a freshman. Yeah, think about Alabama right now. They're without Jessica Timmons, who injured a knee in their last game against Tennessee. That's a big loss. A kid that was averaging 11 points and four rebounds. So the depth of Alabama has taken a hit as we get ready for this NCAA tournament first round game. Omaria well, Gordon with the ball in her hand. Brianna Turnage, a.k.a. Snoop, as she likes to be called, over to Timpson. Timpson rims off, and Loyal McQueen, among others, part of that backcourt that's going to have to carry a little bit more. McQueen, a senior out of Florence, South Carolina. Yeah, Tiffany, both teams are at their best, as Barker in that crowded corner. That's a 10-foot long by 3-foot wide corner that Barker's playing out of. You cannot step backwards. you got to sidestep into your move. Both teams are very comfortable, very confident at their best getting up and down the floor. Florida State making their 18th out of their last 19th NCAA tourney appearances. Made it all the way to the semifinals in the ACC tournament as Timpson gets on the board for the Seminoles. Boy, she has had a tremendous year, one of the better post years in a Florida State uniform in a long time. Really good on the short roll and the long roll action in the middle part of the floor. Aaliyah Nye going right at Timpson and knocks down the bucket. Well, Aaliyah Nye, who too has had a great season all SEC second team selection, a senior who is having a career year as well. Lats enforcing the issue. You see she falls to the floor, picked up by her teammates. That brace on her left knee, but missing last year's tournament, was hampered by injury, unable to play last year. She said, I'm excited to get on the court and try to soak up this energy and excitement. Brooke Wyckoff, the head coach for the Seminoles, just told her, hey, look, you're built for this moment. You're an elite player, one of the top scorers in the country. And Brooke Wyckoff, what a job she's done taking over for her head coach, Sue Simmerow, three seasons ago. She's at the helm and has her team back in the tournament. Yeah, has kept it rolling. 11 straight NCAA tournaments for this team out of Tallahassee, Florida State. They expect to be in the NCAA tournament. They expect to advance. A lot of athletes, a lot of depth. A team that likes to get downhill. It all starts with Tania Latson who's already gotten there a couple of times, but the post play is a real problem, I think, for Alabama in this game. Timpson is a very good athlete, 6'2", can move, finish on, the, finish on the move with the catch. Hard to guard, 21 in those maroon uniforms. Sarah Ashley Barker, her second team, or second season with the Alabama Crimson Tide, and Carly Weathers leaves it short on the three-point attempt, and the very speedy, diminutive Omaria Gordon over to Sarah Bajetti. Very quick pace, a lot of movement. We will see an up and down pace from both of these squads. Yeah, it's a premium on your transition defense to get back, build a, build a wall, stop the ball, and get matched up. They can get you because they're so fast, Tiffany. They can get you in a mismatch in their transition game. Gianna Cunningham, who's off the mark from the elbow, and her presence inside to go along with Essence Cody. They'll go in and out, and Gianna Cunningham is going to have to protect that pain as she falls to the floor, and Latson gets it in. Really nice working off that quick high ball screen, that high flat ball screen in transition. Difficult to defend when you got a guard bringing it with speed. Last year's WBCA National Freshman of the Year was Latson, double zero, and Garnet back on the other end 
Parker going right at Bajetti. A really tough defender strips it away. Live ball turnover, the steal here. Bajetti leading the break, the quickness, and she's fouled. Yeah, it does seem like, especially at the three small guard spots, Florida State the quicker team to start this game. Barker that time with a strong physical drive that opens up her shoulders and allows Bajetti to come with the hot hands right here. Opens up the shoulders, boom, that's just a rip and a take. Really well done by Bajetti, who plays with a lot of force and personality. And Barker will have a lot of defensive attention on her the entire afternoon. Here's Timpson, who's already got it going and taking it right to the body of Cunningham. She is really good with both hands as a finisher. A right-handed kid, though, that can finish with that right paw, that left paw, and do it off the bounce. Hard to stay in front of a driving five. 10-4 advantage early on for Florida State. Both teams coming in with 23 wins on the year. Barker, too strong. And Christy Curry, who is just a pleasure to cover year in and year out in her 11th season with this Crimson Tide team and second year straight earning an at-large bid. And she said, hey, look, we have dealt with a short bench this season, especially with Jessica Timmons going down. It just has to be next player up. Essence Cody is going to be important that she stays on the court and out of foul trouble yeah, after that make. Yeah, no doubt. And because of that foul trouble, Alabama is showing a possession of zone right now. And it catches Florida State by surprise St at the elbow. Stolen away by Weathers on the break, and Barker will go to the free throw line and shoot two. Man, Barker plays with so much force. A former Alabama Gatorade High School Player of the Year out of Spain Park High School in Hoover, Alabama. It's been her first couple of years at Georgia, but this is an all-SEC player and an all-SEC athlete. Her, her dad, Jay, was a quarterback at Alabama for Gene Stallings back in 1992, and they won the national championship. And now for our need to know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods, Sarah Ashley Barker. Averaging more than 17 points on the season, part of the 1,000-point club. You mentioned this team goes as Sarah Ashley Barker goes, or they like to call her S.A. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, she's taken over 410 shots on the year. She's made half of her field goal attempts, and she doesn't take easy ones, Tiffany. She's a very good at playing through contact, finishing through a hit. They move her around the floor on the offensive end. She's just a tough cover overall, talking about three and one. He's Latson and Latson on the way to the hoop. And that's what she's able to do, a three-level score, but can get downhill. Man, just drove right through that Alabama zone. You can't guard the ball. You can't guard the glass. So many problems just multiply off of the inability to stop dribble penetration. Parker trying to move off the screen and dump down low to Cody and bounce out of bounds. Uh, Latson is almost, almost indefensible with her blow-by ability. And most importantly, she's got a terrific change of speed, change of pace about her. Strong with the right hand, but a very physical, tough 5'8 sophomore. Again, a team high, 17 shots a game coming from zero in Garnet, not maroon. Garnet. <laughs> Garnet. You got to get the Garnet <laughs> to go along with the goal. You better get it right for the old faithful will come after I'll you. I'll be lit up on Twitter <laughs> more than normal. And foul off the miss from Nye. A quick start for the Florida State Seminole. A lot of possessions back and forth. Four point advantage for the Knowles. This Florida State group has ridden the wave and they feel like they're battle tested. Well, what I love about both Alabama and Florida State, they're coming out of leagues, the SEC and the ACC, that have put eight teams in this NCAA tournament on the women's side that leads the country. So they have been tested all year long. They've seen athletes, they've seen size, they've seen speed, they've seen different defenses. They've had kids that can go for 20 or 25 or 30 if you don't get after them. Both teams really, really well prepared. Brooke Wyckoff and Christy Curry are as respected as any coach in the women's game on the sidelines right now. Two terrific leaders of these women inside to Tania Latson and Latson who has 
just blossom. Oh, Only a wow. great player, but the turnaround jumper is true. She is blossom under Brooke Wyckoff in the stand. Tiffany, I say, oh wow, because the explosion of, of Latson at 5'8 to elevate over the outstretched arms of the taller defender, very impressive. Parker elevates as well and gets that one to bounce in. That is her money spot right there, Barker. If she wins the elbow, she's going to rise and fire as a big six-foot guard. You just can't get to her basketball. An unblockable shot as a jump shooter. Alexis Tucker into the ball game now, and Barker runs into or collides with Bajetti, and you see the toughness. Both of these players bring a whole lot of toughness to the court. Watch this elevation by Latson. I mean, this is a kid that's only 5'8". She pivots off the pressure. Those good high hand challenge by Barker, who's six feet tall. She just rises over the top of it. And Barker on the offensive end off of a ball screen. If she can turn the corner and get to that elbow, she is a high, high percentage jump shooter. Critical foul there, though. Second yeah. personal foul picked up by Barker. And so she'll go to the bench. Watch on as Delgene Williams into the ball game. Bajetti knocks down the triple. A key fourth score in the double figures, averaging 12 a game. Team high, 61 made threes now on the year from Sarah Bajetti. Great emotional leader for the Seminoles as well. Loyal McQueen called for the travel. She can get it popping though, can Sarah Bajetti? Well, she, she carries absolutely the biggest personality on the team, we know that. Very noticeable yesterday in practice, but Ton of confidence, dancing in the pregame warm-ups, very loose, just like you want an older, experienced guard to handle, a fifth-year senior to handle this stage. Out of Helsinki, Finland, as she's blocked by Essence Cody. That block shot will not rattle the confidence, though, of Sarah Bacchetti. I mean, she isn't afraid to let it fly in any area of the game, covers it up, and boy, a great rotation over defensively by the freshman post, Essence Cody. And they are back the other way. Alexis Tucker deflecting that shot of Loyal McQueen. So good defense on both ends as Tucker, a grad transfer from UC Santa Barbara. Tiffany, Alabama already down seven and Sarah Ashley Barker on the bench in foul trouble. They've got to hold on in this first half. Interesting if Christy Curry will go back to her at some point and let her play through foul trouble. They, they need her offense that much. And they need Aaliyah Nye to step up while SA is off the court, brings them within five after that make. Omaria Gordon with a step too strong. Yeah, if Alabama's gonna ice and, and down you on that side ball screen action, you've gotta be aggressive to the rim with it. Deljanae Williams, also known as Berger, steps on the inline. And now the eighth turnover for Alabama, taking care of the basketball is gonna be at a premium for the Crimson Tide. I love that story. Deljane Williams, known as Berger, and she has no idea how it came from. She thinks her grandmother maybe started calling her that when she was little, but one of the most unique and coolest names in this tournament, Berger Williams. No one knows though how that no. really correlates to cause, cause if you look at her, there's there's nothing that pops off Burger <laughs> no, no, when no. you see her, right? Leah Nye turn around jumper won't go down and Tucker comes up with it. You know, breaking down Alabama, they, they don't wow you in any area. They're just really solid in every area to their fourth seed in that SEC, which if you do that, you do a lot of good things well. The shot force by Tucker. Got numbers. In transition, Berger over to Nye, one of the best three-point shooters in the country halfway down, pops back out. And it's important in this game for Nye to get some open looks in transition. The reason why I say that, she is a three-point specialist. One of the better shooters in the women's tournament is Nye, and you've got to get her looks in transition if you can. Well, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, Go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Need eight and Sweet 16 next weekend. And come April, we'll be in the Final Four territory as four teams will converge on Cleveland. Latson, move around. Tiffany, we talk about the one seed, South Carolina, Iowa, Texas, USC. Texas took care of business here in Austin in our first game. 
They value that one seed. They have won 31 of the last 41 NCAA national titles on the women's side. You combine that with the two seeds, the one and two seeds have won 38 out of the 41. Man, there's so much value in those regular season runs and getting those one or two seeds. Yeah, that chase for perfection with South Carolina, the favorite to win the national title by our ESPN analytics for the third straight year, the number one overall seed. I mean, to me, Don Staley is deserving again of the national coach of the year. You, you lose all five starters and the number one pick in the league of Austin, and you come back and rattle off 32 straight wins in regular season again. Man, that, that is some special stuff. We may not see that again in the women's game as much as it changes with the portal and all the things going on. Well, blocks on back-to-back -back ends. First it was Essence Cody, then Snoop Turnage on the other end for the Seminoles. Well, the athletes that come out of the SEC and the ACC sometimes are just a little bit different. And where does that show up? It shows up in defensive plays and those plays from behind, recovery length, recovery speed. You got to deal with it when you're playing against teams like Alabama and Florida State. A whistle on the shot. Our officials for this afternoon, my Forsberg, Tony Patillo, and Brandon Innerlong. So Florida State's third team foul. That one whistled against Omaria Gordon, her first personal. That'll send Essence Cody to the line. If we talked about how Florida State, they want to play a fast tempo. They average 77 possessions per 40 minutes. So they, they play fast, they take good care of the ball, only about a 15% turnover rate, which is outstanding when you're playing that fast of a pace. And Alabama has to match it if they're gonna hang in this game. Well, Florida State led the ACC in scoring during the regular season, top 20 in the nation overall. They started this game 7 of 11. Since then, they've gone 0 for 7 from the floor. Nice. And Gordon clears that up right there. Really nice to come off that ball screen. Did not over penetrate as a small guard at 5-4. Stopped at the elbow, trusted the jump shot. Man, the explosiveness of Latson and Gordon. Very difficult to defend as jump shooters. Royal McQueen looking around. Nye tried to come off. Finds a little space from three and rattles home. And that brings us to the close of the opening quarter as Alabama comes within four in a back and forth affair here from Austin. She's got a couple of Absolutely. games. She's got she's got a couple of opportunities to chase it down. Yeah, I was very impressed with Alabama to hang in there because S.A. Barker only played six minutes in that opening quarter. And to only be down four with your best player on the bench with foul trouble, Christy Curry doesn't like where she's at, but she'll take it right now. Got to manage the foul trouble and the minutes in this game right now, and the scoreboard dictates it all. Well, coming into the second quarter, Meg Newman seeing her first minutes, 42 in the wide as Royal McQueen gets it over to Berger. And Del Janay passes it over. Newman short. Gordon start stops. Pagetti. She's had a one blocked already. Thought about it. Kicks it over. Good ball movement. And coming up with the rebound, Alabama. Here's Loyal McQueen. Wow. You see her quickness in the open court. Yeah, no doubt. That's an SEC athlete you're dealing with. I mean, she leads Bama in assists and free throws made. Another downhill athletic kid for Christy Curry to put on the floor. And you see SA three in white standing up while looking on as there's been no answer for KK no. Timpson. And it's a tough match. Essence Cody, a true freshman for Alabama, has been the starting post player for Christy Curry all year long. That's a lot to ask as a, for an 18 year old to go up against 21, 22 year old kids. And how about stepping out, showing the range and knocking down the three. Essence Cody <laughs> with her sixth triple of the season. Uh, she has really grown this year. I mean, she's been thrown into the fire. The bigs of the SEC are as good as anybody's out there and she gets better and better week to week. Talking about 21 in white, the post player for Alabama. McQueen looking on, finding Nye. Remember, they can get Nye in some space and create some opportunities. She can knock down three, but Essence Cody trying her hand at another triple, no good. And it looks good coming off her wrist, though, does it not? Yeah. Gordon 
Drive, kick, Pajetti knocks it down. Tiffy, she can really spin it as a shooter now. She's got a great rotation. And she just won the sprint to that deep corner, sat there waiting on it. Florida State throwing strikes right now on their end, which always is a sign of a good shooting team as well. Shooting 41% on the season. Bama had a 44% clip coming into today's game. Nye off the screen. And not just has all. not been able to get it to go. Meanwhile, foul underneath the basket as Florida State's Omaria Gordon whistled for the foul. You mentioned Ali and I, one of the better shooters in the SEC this year, number 32 for Alabama. She will be switched on at all chances and switched to deny. You cannot let her get going as a three-point shooter. That shot altered. Weathers didn't give up on it. Sticks it in. Yeah, she's really a competitor. I mean, her dad, a Major League Baseball pitcher, uh, back for the Yankees in 96, her brother right now in the Miami organization, just a very competitive kid, competitive family. Timpson, offensive rebound, put back in. Hand. To your point, no answer right now for Timpson on the inside. I Means she's right there setting school records, single season, double doubles, blocks, rebounds. Led the entire ACC in block shots, and the second place kid was 24 blocks behind her. Bam! Deljanae Williams knocks down the three. Just a 25% three-point <laughs> shooter on the year, not bothered by that number in this NCAA tournament. Well, they're gonna look to get in to 21 and Garnet again. She's got 10 points already, and somehow gets that one to go. That one was deflected on the way up with the strong hands from KK Tim. Tiffany, Florida State has three kids that are very difficult to stay in front of. They always find a mismatch. That time it was Bajetti just getting downhill, making a play for their big. Loyal McQueen with an open look from downtown, and right now, Alabama finding success from beyond the arc. The third three of the game, and we're not at that 28. Can't emphasize enough how big it is for Alabama to be tied this game with Sarah Ashley Barker on the bench with foul trouble. Again, there is KK Timpson right at her season average of 14 points on that make, and she'll go to the free throw line and try to complete the three-point you know play. She, you know she's good at? She's good at a lot of things. She's good at staying away from the ball and trusting the ball to find her on the backside, either as a backside rebounder or a backside finisher. A lot of post players will chase the ball and put the guard in a bad spot by making a play through traffic. She stays off the ball and finds the backside really well. I was impressed with it on film. I'm impressed with it in person. You spoke to how well she has engineered this season in a Florida State uniform, one of the best to wear it, and 21 is a special number. We'll get into that in just a moment. As Loyal McQueen tries to set up this offense, got to work with the shot clock winding down. Again, good to Nye, and Nye gets that runner to go in. But you're making Nye do something off the bounce. I mean, she is an outstanding three-point shooter at a 42% clip. You can live with those tough twos by chasing her off the three-point line. They're looking inside again. Instead, Latson says, I'm gonna go off too. She's now in double figures as well. Gets it off over a post player. Man, the pop that she has into her jump shot, impressive. Nine. They're just making everything difficult for her in a traveling violation against the Crimson Tide. A two-point ball game in favor of the nine seed Florida State Seminoles. Come back here with us. Well, it's been the Tania Latson and Michaela Timpson show. Timpson wearing number 21, just like her head coach did when she wore a Florida State uniform, saying, hey, look, I want to pay homage and respect and achieve great things like Brooke Wyckoff did when she played here with the Seminoles. And boy, the growth and development that you have seen from Timpson has just been phenomenal. She's got 14 points already to lead all scores in this one. Yeah, Brooke Wyckoff's jersey is retired for Florida State, not the number. And Brooke Wyckoff, just an outstanding player herself, played in the WNBA for, what, eight or nine years, and 
Highly competitive coach, highly competitive team. What I like about Alabama without Parker, the ball is moving, multiple kids are scoring, the ball's getting side to side. Tiffany, that's what I'm talking about. You got multiple kids that are just kind of lining it up and turning it to a one-on-one -on -one game and winning their battle off the bounce. Good job by Carly Weathers to get fouled. Brooke Wyckoff looks on, and her team, who has kind of controlled this pace for much of the way, but Alabama has come back. Remember, Sarah Ashley Barker went on the bench with just over four minutes to go in the first quarter, and they have stayed right in there at the Crimson Tide as they're even at 32, but that separates them as Bajetti knocks down the three ball. Tiffany, it all started though with Alabama's inability to delete the drive. The drive happens, the ball gets on the glass, the defense gets in rotation, offensive rebound, kick out, bam, nothing but the ball. Inside to Essence Cody and a good find there from Weathers. Boy, she's gonna be a heck of a player. 84 offensive rebounds coming into this game on the year, 91 field goals made, so she lives around that rim area. Tucker thought about it, but Jenny, who's three for three from long range instead, watches Tucker knock down the mid-range. Alabama has to take control of this basketball in terms of tightening it up already. 10 turnovers for the Crimson Tide in this first half. That's too big of a number in this NCAA tournament against good teams. Well, the Crimson Tide have found success on this end of the floor, made their last six shots, and Loyal McQueen has to get it moving. Five on the shot clock. And not enough time as a shot clock violation. Good defense there from Florida State. What did Brooke tell us yesterday? She said, I trust our offense. Our defense has to carry us if we're going to advance in this tournament. And a really good defensive possession to stay in front of that Alabama dribble drive. They got the thing reversed a couple of times, but Florida State never opened up their hips. They stayed squared on the ball. As a result, they get a shot clock violation. Looking over to Nia Latson, can't leave her open, but she says, I want to go in closer and get a higher percentage shot. And last touch by the officials say Florida State. The Alabama players saying it was off of a Knowles player. Let's take another look at it here. Well, Florida State continues to punch the paint, man or zone. They are getting downhill in this game, and that's all Florida State. And the last talks by Tucker, but it sure no like replay right there. Or review, rather. Florida State holds on to it. Bonner leaves it short. Weathers rebound. I will say this about Florida State. They are very right-handed as a team on the offensive end. If you can force them weak a few times per half, it'd be a big advantage for Alabama. Man, can she spin it? Over the Man. defender in her face, and Ali and Nye coming back with the three, holding it up as Nye knocks down her first triple. She's got 11 points tonight. Man, what a beautiful release. She shot it in a 45% clip from three a year ago, 42% this year. Alexis Tucker answering back on the other end. Remember, she started the season, went cold during ACC play, so started coming off the no. bench, but she's giving them a nice lift here. You see Santa Barbara transfer, very smart, high IQ game. An 8-9 seed, you wouldn't expect there to be much separation in this matchup. Surprise in the right way that Alabama is hanging in this thing with Sarah Ashley Barker only playing six minutes total because of foul trouble. She's Alabama's best player. From deep, how about it from Carly Weathers? And Weathers getting into the action. Alabama has now knocked down five from long range. Final minute of the first half. Tie ball game at 40 apiece. A chance to advance to the second round. Off the mark from Bajetti. McQueen with a little shake. Thought about it off that screen and decides to reset. Nye, who has a school record in threes. 
And the quickness, the transition game is where Florida State excels. And now, an opportunity for Alabama to hold for the final shot of the half. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you have managed the foul trouble of Sir Ashley Barker. At worst, you go in tied and you feel really good about yourself. If you are the Crimson Tide, take the last shot of this half. Essence Cody has two defenders around her deep underneath the basket and the block emphatically from KK Timpson. And that's how we close the first 20 minutes here from Austin. Alabama, Florida State tied at 40 apiece here at the half. As now we send it to the halftime report in the studio. You're watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One here from Austin. A tie ball game between Alabama and Florida State as we check out our game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Both teams shot the ball well, 53% from the floor for Alabama. The big story for them, though, turnovers, 11. They've got to try to limit that. Yeah, no doubt, but still a lot of shot makers, a lot of speed, a lot of size on the floor with two teams out of the SEC and the ACC. If you're Alabama, you've got to be really, really happy because S.A. Barker only played six minutes, the best player for Alabama, and Alabama looks at it, it's a 40-40 game. You compound that with the fact that Jessica Timmons out for the year, the depth of Alabama has stepped up when they've had to do it. Well, when you look at our most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity, it was Michaela Timpson. Yeah, she, there's no answer right now for Alabama. For the most part, she's a very physical, really good athlete, plays off the ball well, and has great hands. Seldom does she fumble a tough pass or a fast pass. Also a tremendous shot blocker. He races one at the end of the first half. And we start off where we begin, all tied up 44. And Simpson in a scrump with S.A. Barker and her teammate. And you go back to Timpson, what she has done throughout this season. 86 blocks, that one to end the half set a single season record in program history for blocks. Timpson is just having a tremendous year. Well, she's a 6'2 athlete with a 79 inch wingspan and teams avoid her on film, especially teams that are familiar with her in ACC play. They drive the ball, they stay off of her and respect her as a shot alterer and shot changer and blocker on the defensive end. Latson, who had a strong first half with 10 points off the mark there. Back the other way, Sarah Ashley Barker starting off this third quarter. And they've got to get her going after having sat so long. We'll see how she's utilized as they hand it right back over to Bama. So, so what makes Barker such a tough cover, Tiffany, as you've seen already in this half, She's very good with the ball, operating off of a ball screen, and she's a six-foot guard. So not a lot of times you see big guards able to get downhill off of a ball screen as well as this kid does. We'll talk about Aaliyah Nye, who had 11 points to lead the way for Alabama. Essence Cody with eight in that first half to help hold that lead, and Cody now in double figures with that make. Yeah, just carving out space. Essence Cody, again, a 6'4", true freshman, has been thrown into the battles of the SEC all year long. How about the first lead of this ball game for Alabama after that make? They try to extend it here. Coming back the other way is Nye. Rims off, there's S.A. And Barker keeps this possession alive. They look nice to Cody pass. once again. Wow, there's some contact as well. What a pass by Barker. Just talked about how good she is as an offensive player operating now the ball screen. A nice roll and finish by Essence Cody. Gordon going in, back out to Timpson off the mark. And that may have been partially deflected there by Cody. Getting we, it done on both ends. We got a six foot guard Barker who has the vision and the skill set to deliver those tight pocket passes to the roll ability of Essence Cody at 6-4. Really well done. Uh, Take it away by Barker. Here come the Crimson Tide. Loyal McQueen was looking for her teammates and now gets into action. Off the way. 
At some times in a game, you just have to line up and win your battle. And what a hot start for Alabama Crimson Tide in the third quarter. A 40 to 40 game, a 6-0 run to start with. S.A. Barker making her presence felt as a passer and as a scorer. But the drive ability right here of McQueen. Loyal McQueen, loyal to her game. What is it? Drive the ball, make tough finishes. Crimson Tide up six. Well, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship first round continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ABC. UConn hosting at Jackson State. Then you'll have Caitlin Clark leading the way at 3 p.m. as they host Holy Cross. You'll see Kent State, Notre Dame in action along with another number one seed in this tournament. USC taking on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And so many things you can say about Caitlin Clark. How about 37 points per 40 minutes played, the most we've had in the women's game in the past 25 years. She has made 96 three-point shots this year from 25 feet or beyond. That's the distance that that kid shoots the ball with. And those upperclassmen, Caitlin Clark, Rakea Jackson, Cameron Brink, they will be very difficult to knock out of this women's NCAA tournament. Their last tournament go around as individuals, hard to knock them out. As a result, as teams, will be hard to knock those type of those type of teams out of this tournament. In the process, they're going through a review on the court as Bergetti is grabbing her neck. We're going to step aside and have Alabama some more information when you come back. So a common foul called as Sarah Ashley Barker picks up her third personal foul. In the process, she gets tangled up near that neck area with Sarah Bajetti. We're gonna bring in Lisa Mattingly, our ESPN rules analyst, a Hall of Fame official who has been through the tournament many times over, 10 national championships you have officiated. And when they got a chance to review that, why did it remain a common foul? Hey, Tiffany, uh, I believe it's just because she just kind of really kind of runs into her shoulder, or holds onto her shoulder a little bit. I couldn't tell from this angle. So it would just appear the common foul was probably just a good thing there. I couldn't tell if she pulled her hair. Uh, that would be an intentional, I would say, but I don't think that's what happened. Yeah, Lisa, I, I agree. I don't think it was excessive or unnecessary. She just kind of opened enough to pass a cutter off and unfortunately got Bajetti around the neck area. But a good job by the officials to take a look at it. Common foul play on, and we appreciate your help. But Jenny comes out of the timeout after that review, knocks down the jumper. And again, we'll see how this Crimson Tide team responds with Sarah Ashley Barker on the bench as Tamaya Latson going right to the hoop. Man, she has a gear that is uncommon. Not only in the half court, but in the open floor, she can be going full speed and just find another gear to finish from that free throw line down. So explosive, zero in Garnet. Well, Essence Cody, Aaliyah Nye, who did a great job in the absence of Sarah Ashley Barker. Nye tangled up there with Bonner, the foul on the floor against Florida State. Let's go back to Latson and just what she does in transition. That changes speed right there at the three-point line, and great guards will read the floor. The three-point line is kind of a yield sign. It's not a stop sign. It's not a green light. You read the defense as a yield sign, read the traffic. She just, bam, has a burst can really get to the rim as well as anyone out of the ACC this year. All year long, she's done it. Omaria Gordon steps in with the steal, recovers it, finds Bonner streaking down the court, and we're tied at 46. And just like that, a 6-0 run by Alabama is answered by a 6-0 run by the Seminoles. Man, the speed and quickness all over the floor is hard to deal with. Any lazy, slow pass will just be chewed up. That's a pretty lazy pass from McQueen. And a really good, fast athlete again. Omariah Gordon, defensive point guard, very secure with the ball, has made a high percentage of her threes this year, but a big time steal in the open floor and finish. You love a player like Omaria Gordon. She, she too missed the NCAA tournament, hampered by an Achilles injury last season. A playmaker, an X factor for this group and a fully healthy version of Mario Gordon is a very dangerous player on the court. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, she has the reputation with her coaches of always making smart decisions. A lethal ball handler with a good tight handle. 
just a, a difference maker that makes winning plays. It was just a quick breather for SA on the bench, back on the floor. Like the decision to keep her on the court or bring her back with three fouls? I don't think it's much of a decision because Christy knows that S.A. Barker is an older kid, has played with foul trouble before, but she's going to be very careful. As aggressive as she is offensively, I'd be more almost as concerned with her picking up a, an offensive foul as hard as and as much force as she drives the ball with right now as defensively. And if you're Florida State, you go at S.A. Barker a couple of possessions right now and try to put a fourth one on her. Now I have that one blocked by Latson. It's going to stay with Alabama. 17 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Well, because of that foul trouble there for Sarah Ashley Barker, just four points, one of four from the floor. They'll want to get her going. That one waved off the foul before Omaria Gordon whistled for the personal foul. And that's her second, team's second as well. Parker looking, takes it, and the shot-blocking yeah. machine of Timpson. That's her fourth. And she's, like I said, she's such an aggressive offensive player in constant pursuit of the ball, but even when she gets this shot blocked, she's going to try to come from behind and make a play, and right there, the contact, man, what a tough, tough call, and a fourth foul on S.A. Barker. Well, the message to Christy Curry's group when Jessica Timmons went out in the SEC tournament, next player up. We've seen how Alabama responded in that first half when Sarah Ashley Barker had foul trouble. Can they do it again here and keep it close as it is? Carly Weathers, good yeah, look, dead that, on. The ball screen offense by Alabama has been really good to them. Florida State's big, they're playing drop coverage. Therefore, Alabama is gonna have to take and make some of those 14, 15 foot jump shots. Latson thought about it. Fouled on the perimeter by Delgene Williams. Well, it's been a tough afternoon for Alabama's leading player in Sarah Ashley Barker and what she has done and having to look on, hoping her team can keep this one close. Dangerous pass brought down by Amaya Bonner. In the half court here for Florida State. Bonner, the sophomore. Looking to get it back out to Bajetti. Bajetti makes her move. Trying to dump it off to Timpson. Turnover. Alabama in transition. McQueen thought about it, took it all the way. Cody on the offensive rebound, and she's fouled on the putback. Man, I love the motor, though, of Essence Cody to sprint the floor because that ball was really advanced with a lot of speed. And she comes from behind the play and right there to clean up the miss on the right side. And this, this freshman, as physical as she is, she can really run in the open floor. McQueen brings it with speed, and Essence Cody is right there, even with the play to clean up the miss. Very impressive job by Essence Cody. When you talk about just being able to handle the physical nature, that's week in and week out, game in and game out in the SEC. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Because of our guy, Jack Golke from Oakland, there were 22 million brackets submitted on the ESPN's challenge. Only 1,800 of them were perfect after day one, <laughs> mainly because of Golke knocking down 10 out of 23s <laughs> against Kentucky. <laughs> You had that one on your bracket, right? No, I did not, but probably should have. I've seen Kentucky's defense all year. Track down Ooh. after Gordon missed that long three. She gets the O board. <laughs> and then Bonner not expecting it. Well, those guards of Florida State are so fast. The foot race to the ball, hard to keep them from winning it. Well, Christy Curry sees her team with a four point advantage. Second straight tournament. Want to better from what they did last year. Lost to Baylor in the opening round. Timpson 
Working on the glass. There's Tucker. Pinball around there. And up the right side, here comes Loyal McQueen. Tiffany continue to take it, I'm telling you. The ball screen action, watch the Florida State defensive post player. They're playing in drop coverage. Christy Curry sees it. Continue with the ball screen action. Trust your guards to make the right plays. Alexis Tucker, turnaround jumper, no good. Esses Cody grabbing the board. Cody now with eight rebounds. Wow, that's the speed of Alabama's guards in the open floor and off the ball screen. Watch the defensive post player for Florida State. Drop coverage, dropping back. If you can make a tough two, so be it. Well, you know what Alabama says? We can make tough twos, continue to do it. And uh, this is how we do it. Like Montel Jordan and Tiffany Green were singing it the last time out. And McQueen says, this is how we do it on our ball screen offense. Take what the defense gives you. Come on, finish that. Finish that five. No, you, finish you, five you, you finish it. It's Friday night, <laughs> and I feel all right. It, it literally, literally is Friday night, and you do feel all right, and so does Alabama's guards in their ball screen offense. And if you're Christy Curry and this coaching staff, you've got to feel good, too, understanding that Sarah Ashley Barker has yes. had foul trouble all game long, and this Alabama team is unfazed. If I'm Christy Curry the next time out, I start the time out with, this is how we do it. <laughs> We're just having too much fun. I can, you know, can we continue to do this, Jimmy? Is it fair? Is I don't it know. That we, we, we may be told no more. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> there it is again. Attack that drop. Jetty, active hands there. Weathers finds nine. Tie off the screen. Williams. Dropped it off and just not expecting it was Cunningham. Here's the quickness out in the front court. Oh, 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 behind the back pass by Bajetti <laughs> and Latson. Good finish it, but she'll go to the free throw line and shoot a couple. Bajetti is not afraid of the moment. Full speed, 100 miles an hour with a behind, a hat behind the back pass, and it is perfectly on time and on target. Florida State again, one of the fastest teams in college basketball this year. And they rushed that thing up the floor with a vengeance. They averaged, what, 67, 68 field goal attempts per game when the top two or three field goal attempt teams in college ball this year. And that offense orchestrated by associate head coach Bill Farrar. You look, this is pace and space. This is yeah. get up and go. Brooke Wyckoff has seen her team put close to 80 points per game in the process as this is Cody clearing the way and picking up her personal foul. Both teams in the bonus here with you know, 2.30 to go in the third. That, that hire of Bill Ferrara was the first hire that Brooke Wyckoff made and she wanted an offense that was easy to recruit to. And this offense is designed for early post-ups and three-point shots and guards that can attack. And with a head coach that has enough confidence in herself to go get someone that says, hey, you take the offense and give me something to recruit to, and it has worked out to perfection for this Florida State program. They look at him as the offensive coordinator of this group, and they've got Morgan Tolles, another assistant who's the defensive coordinator. So kind of taking a yeah. football-like concept, putting it here on the basketball court. Nearly poked away, but down low. They didn't have anybody around Essence Cody, and she puts it in. What a play, though, by Berger Williams to win the sprint to the ball, keep it alive, keep it in the possession of Alabama. Christy Curry trying to ride this momentum right now with S.A. Barker on the bench with foul trouble. Largest lead of the game yeah, for them. Good job of it. They, you could say they've almost played better without Barker than with Barker. It's yeah. crazy to say that. She's a first-team All-SEC player. Bajetti and the Noles offense got to get something going. Kicked it over to Snoop Turner. Doesn't typically look for her shot, has to here. And a shot clock violation. Florida State over their last eight now on that half of the court. Tiffany, when the shot was blocked, Berger Williams was so alert. The block shot, boom. That's a foot race, a 50-50 ball that she tips it 
Back to Nye, who finds Essence Cody on the inside. That's a big, big play. Instead of Florida State ripping and running the other way for an open court two, they keep possession of it and extend the lead to eight. Well, those are the type of winning plays that Christy Curry no has doubt. talked about needing from her team. Cody, wow. with really no way to go, she says, okay, let me just finish with my left hand. How about that for a freshman to keep her patience and her poise, not travel with the basketball and finish through contact. The end one back the other way. Tanaya Latson trying to fire up the nose. Watch Essence Cody, a 2023 McDonald's All-American, a starter from day one as a true freshman. Nowhere to go, almost over dribbled it, and then goes up to the right shoulder, and a really strong, good finesse left finish. And this has been the answer for Florida State the entire game. When things get tight, drive the ball downhill, bring the officials into the game, and a good job by Florida State with an answer. Again, one of the top scorers in all of college basketball is Tanaya Latson now. 10 straight games with 15 or more points, bringing her team within seven. Carly Weathers knocking it down from downtown. Man, shooting with confidence is Alabama right now. Multiple kids understanding without our leading scorer, Barker on the bench, we've got to step up and shoot with confidence. Good job by Weathers. And an offensive foul called against Florida State, Carla Viegas. And so that's going to give Alabama the ball back. They've got a 10-point lead here. They're shooting the ball exceptionally well. 6 of 12 from beyond the arc. Better than 50% from the field. Essence Cody with a career high tonight. Man, at, at the right time, I, I love the energy and the confidence of the Alabama bench right now as much as the five on the floor. Weathers looking for Cody again, trying to add to that block by Timpson. Kept alive. Second chance opportunity. Nye on the attack. Nice move. Wow. And How good has she been for a three-point specialist to understand they could take away my space. I'm going to drive at a big-time play and finish by Aliyah Nye. Nye now with 13 points and a double-digit lead for the eight-seed Alabama Crimson Tide. They've got a chance to add more to it out in transition. Oh! Instead of shooting it up, she tried to get that extra pass. But what a third quarter from Alabama, outscoring Florida State 23 to 11. Man, the heart, the toughness, the confidence from Alabama to play with S.A. Barker on the bench. No problem. The depth of Alabama stepping up. This is how we do it, says Ali and I. SEC all freshman team member all year long. They're thrown in that starting lineup, 32 straight starts, 33 now this afternoon. Big foundation piece for Christy Curry to continue to build this program around going forward. Career high, 18 points. She eclipsed her 16 that she scored against Georgia back on January 11th. The noticeable difference, and then Timpson, they go right to her immediately. That's where Florida State had success early on. Yeah, you have to, and especially, I mean, Essence Cody with two personal fouls. You could go right at her, see if you can get her in foul trouble, but I love setting the rules of how you're going to start the fourth quarter for Florida State. How about the emergence of Carly Weathers? A starter now with 14 points. She's 7 of 10 from the floor at the end one here. About the play of Weathers. Former Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year out of Loretto High School in Tennessee. And there's not a lot of flash to her game. She just does everything really well. And I think it's interesting that Christy Curry starts the fourth quarter, keeps S.A. Barker on the bench, understanding the five I have on the floor right now, they are extending the lead, just reading the game as a coach is Christy Curry and going with her gut right now. I love the call that she's making. I would agree with you because sometimes when you have the best player on the court, you tend to look to them, but everyone else is around is stepping up and showing what they can do. Stay with that ball screen offense, right? If you're Alabama, it's been good to you all game long. Defensively, what does Florida State need to do to slow down the Crimson Tide? Well, they're going to have to turn Alabama over, and they had some success in the first half with 11 turnovers. But Tiffany, Florida State, they have to score off their defense right now with nine to go in this game. Bajetti 
Almost had that one go down. The offensive rebound, Amaya Bonner, another good look for three. Two good looks. Letting Ipney on that possession. Berger with the take all the way to the hoop. She falls hard to the floor. Four on four here in transition. Just losing the handle, Bonner, but able to get it over to Latson. Bajetti on the take. And this is where Florida State has worn down a lot of teams, but SEC athletes are right there with the best out of the ACC. It'll be very difficult, I think, to get into the legs of these Alabama guards. They have a lot of energy, a lot of light in their look right now. Christy Curry, a lot of things working well for her with eight to go in this game. Working off that, and that one partially deflected by Bonner. She's Witzel for the personal foul. Second team foul for Florida State. Bonner's fourth. Tiffany, if I'm reading Christy Curry from the opposite, I, I think she's gonna trust her ball screen offense a lot to close this game out. And why do I say that? Because she's gotten really good looks, getting downhill, turning the corner, making Florida State pay for their drop coverage. And kids like McQueen and Ali and I are gonna be really very important to read that ball screen, be tight with it, secure with it, don't turn it over with under eight to go now and a 13-point lead. Well, what did Christy Curry tell us about this team, especially on the defensive end? They're just a really connected group. Yeah. We're seeing that right now. They banded together and have a 13-point lead here with just under eight minutes to go. Yeah, she talked about our first line of defense has to be good, and that has been. Florida State, not a lot of run-out opportunities. Alabama's gotten back and built the wall and stopped the ball at a pretty good rate. Florida State's gonna need more takes like that again. The aggressiveness from Latson nets her a chance at the line. And since Cody picks up her third personal foul. So Tanaya Latson, who got off to a quick start, 16 points in this one. And this group is trying to play inspired basketball as They've had to all season long. Their head coach, Rick Wyckoff, fighting breast cancer, currently a very good prognosis, had surgery in the fall. And this group knows that they have drawn inspiration and toughness from their head coach, seeing how she's shown up every day. Yeah, we asked her yesterday, and she said, you know what, I, I got a chance to live what we teach our kids all the time. I got a chance to, to show them daily what resilience, gratitude, perseverance looks like. Not a missed opportunity at all by Brooke Wyckoff. And her kids are still okay in this game right now, but they got to take advantage of the fact that Barker's on the bench, Essence Cody's on the bench, no Jessica Timmons. This is the time right now for Florida State over these next probably two minutes to fight their way back in. Lots in skies to get that rebound. Going downhill all the way. Gets her own board, yep. cut back, and one. It just feels like this is the time. And Christy Curry sees the same thing. Essence Cody up off the bench, coming right back in. Has been such a pressure release on both ends of the floor. But if you're Florida State, you stay with what you've been all year long. You have raced the ball up the floor at every opportunity. Very aggressive on the offensive glass. And and one opportunity to stop the clock and you continue to put game pressure on Alabama. Well, what a career Tanaya Latson has had thus far. ACC Rookie of the Year, National Freshman of the Year a season ago, another terrific sophomore campaign to follow up. Essence Cody back in the ball game, working on the boards, and Timpson is right there to greet her. Will Christy Curry go with S.A. Barker? It's probably time now. The game feels a little unsettled. And Barker has been your all SEC player. And to my point, getting ready to check in is S.A. Barker. Well, Sarah Ashley Barker, who's only played nine minutes in this one, and it's gonna be critical for the remaining 651 in this one, as it's a tight one between Alabama and Florida State. 68, 66-58, Alabama on top. Welcome back, where well, if you're just tuning in, let's check out the Star Stories brought to you by Honda. 
Tania Latz in 21 points, leading the way, the leading scorer for the Seminoles. She's been terrific tonight. And Essence Cody, the true freshman, has had a career night, 18 points, a career best. She's got a third double-double of the season and four blocks as well. And she's had to do it because the All-SEC performer, Sarah Ashley Barker, no factor in this game, has only played nine minutes. And with four personal fouls, she now checks back in. And Sarah Ashley Barker, as competitive as she is, she's going to have to stay on the floor, stay out of foul trouble, and keep Alabama in a groove right now. They've been in a good groove without her on the court, which is not the norm. Drives baseline, Gordon with the reverse finish layup. Nothing finesse out of Florida State in their timeouts. They have driven the ball or thrown it inside on every out of bounds situation in this game. And we talk about the aggressiveness of Sarah Ashley Barker when she came into this program in her first season at Alabama last year. Christy Curry loved the edge here. Blocked from behind as Carly Weathers rejects that one. It's not a strong pass at all by Sarah Ashley Barker. Completely out of groove in this game. And that recovery length and speed that has shown up in this game by both sides in transition defense once again. Timpson going yeah. right at Sarah Ashley Barker trying to draw that foul. Instead, she draws her <laughs> offensive <laughs> foul, a charge right there from Timpson. The guts that it takes for Barker to stay in here and take this hit, knowing I got four fouls, how important I am. She gets her feet in a legal set position before that pivot foot or that jump foot is on the ground. Man, a tough defensive play and a big one in this one. Nine. Free throw line jumper is true. Stay with your ball screen offense. Florida State has not shocked the ball one time. They have not impacted the ball on the ball screen offense the entire game. They are in drop coverage. They are giving Alabama 15-foot jump shots. Continue to take them with confidence if you're the Crimson Tide. Back to Laxon. Double zero and Garnet. That shot altered. Timpson going after it. The go get him this from KK Timpson and Warren. Yeah, just go get it, huh? Quicker to the ball that time was Michaela Timpson. And she has been so good playing off the ball. You see her sprinting to the weak side, but then comes to the ball side. Then goes right up through the arm contact. There wasn't a lot of it, but those defenders, Tiffany, get their arms outside of their normal plane. That's going to be an easy call to make for the officials. Talked about the double-double machine that she is now with 17, so adding to her single-season record at Florida State. Meanwhile, the fourth personal foul for Essence Cody, so she will watch on as Timpson brings the Knowles within five. And it's a team that you don't want to put on the foul line. Florida State 77% from the free throw line on the year as a team. Bajetti on Barker. Barker going in. Her own offensive rebound. The stick back from Barker. She didn't give up on that no, play. No, she did not. But uh, Florida State would not let her get to her strong hand. They downed her and she read it. Drove the ball down the left side and to go clean up her miss. Almost got called for over the back. They looked at Timpson committing there. The mid-range jumper holds true for Timpson. But KK Timpson, what an afternoon she's having. She's got 21 points to go along with her teammate, Tania Lapson. A two-possession ball game and a timeout taken by Alabama. Yeah, Timpson has been a handful with 21 points now, 10 out of 19. And you screen the backside of that zone, and Timpson, just as soon as you back off a little bit, the pressure didn't stay on her, gave her some airspace to rise up. Has been a force scoring around the rim, but that time stepped away and knocked down a finesse 10-footer at a key time. Well, folks, this is the fourth straight year. Every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And this is the journey, the road to Cleveland.
The women's Final Four, that's what these teams are hunting for, a chance to play in a national championship. This is how you start your season. You want to make a run. You want to make a push. A great game here in an 8-9 matchup. We saw that earlier with North Carolina and Michigan State. The Tar Heels advancing here. Another close one. Well, and the winner of this one gets the one seed on the, the home floor of Texas on Sunday. And Texas was awfully impressive. They look like a one seed today. Their front line depth and size is going to be a real challenge for either one of these teams, Alabama or Florida State. What I like about the chances of whoever wins this one, the athleticism and the speed that both Florida State and Alabama can throw at a team like Texas. But, man, a crucial 450 to go right now. Live ball turnovers are absolutely killers at this point in the game for either team. Sarah Ashley Parker Got, on yeah. the attack, and that's her fifth personal foul. She's done for the afternoon. So Alabama will have to play the final four minutes and 40 seconds without Sarah Ashley Barker. Florida State took it right to Sarah Ashley Barker the entire game. What I mean by that defensively, the different athletes and the speed has sped Barker up, picked up a couple of offensive fouls, and now she will sit. This is an all-SEC performer. Your leading scorer, 17 points a game. The heart, the soul, the toughness of your team all year long will now have to sit. The good news, Alabama has played really well with Barker on the bench in this game. We'll see how they respond in these final minutes. Tania Latson looking inside, clears out, has a good look up. Mm. The basket won't go. Stay with your ball screen offense if you're Christy Curry. Essence Cody has been a very physical ball screener up top, and your guards have made play after play after play off of that action. McQueen going deeper and deeper, has to get moving quickly. And another offensive foul this time going against Loyal McQueen, and that's her second personal foul. And that's going to send Florida State into the bonus. Excuse me. So the personal foul against McQueen. The next one will send Florida State into the bonus. And Latson coming down. One possession ball game. Under four to go. Aliyah Nye, they deny the sharpshooter from long range. Back out to McQueen. Set the ball screen and get downhill. There it is. Switch it out, you got a mismatch inside. Instead. Nice. But because of the mismatch inside, Essence Cody able to seal off, kind of a, a seal off assist and a really good drive on the back side of the play. Carly Weathers stretching it out again. Five point lead for Alabama. Latson splits a couple of defenders, nearly loses the handle on this one. Turnaround jumper, bounces down. Man, again, I talked about her explosiveness in the first half as a jump shooter. For a 5'8 kid, her ability to elevate over a crowd, very impressive and hard to guard. She wants it in these moments. She gets better in these fourth quarters as Got her it. coach. And there, Essence Cody there. They split Did it through. A clinic, a, a clinic on the ball screen offense by Alabama. There's no reason to run anything else to close out this game. Essence Cody just adding to that career total now with 20 points. The three left from Gordon. That was huge. Don't they shoot with confidence? This time it's Gordon, the point guard has made 55 threes coming into this game with a 38% clip. The value of a point guard that can stroke it on this play. Two-point ball game with two minutes remaining in regulation. A chance to advance to the second round. They look inside to Cody and Timpson. Whistle for the personal foul. They're going to say it's against Alexis Tucker. Cody Essence continues to do major work. A couple of possessions go look at her inside. Boom, just blows up her post defender and carves out space for the drivability of Weathers. Sets the ball screen, rolls out of it. Nice finesse finish. Stick with 21 in white. Off the miss, Tucker corrals the rebound.
Florida State has a chance to tie or potentially take the lead. Gordon, another three, bounced out. Well, that's a good look though, out of horn set. You got a shooter to pop out. You went ball side, threw it back weak side. Everything but went in. Well, this is a game, Jimmy, you felt like would come down to one or yeah. two possessions. It is certainly playing out that way. A minute 23 to go. Timeout taken by Alabama. What does Christy Curry tell her group in this timeout? Well, you don't want to do anything finesse right now offensively by settling for a, you know, a, a three-point shot. Both these teams have been built to drive downhill. Both teams are in the bonus. So Christy Curry reminded her kids, hey, at worst, we got to get ourselves to the free throw line on this possession. What has been good to us the entire game? The team on the right, what you're talking about, your ball screen offense. It's been Essence Cody, the true freshman, setting ball screens, allowing guards to turn the corner, get downhill to a 15-foot pull-up, or find the pocket pass for Cody to finish. I think you keep the ball in the middle third of the floor if you're Christy Curry right now for Alabama. Take away the help. You get the ball on the side, Tiffany, you can get stuck. Keep it in the middle third, set your ball screen, stay with what has been your strength in this game. Defensively, Florida State looking to lock down as Brooke Wyckoff wants to see her team come up with a stop here. Aaliyah what? with a huge three in the corner. How about the guts of the play call by Christy Curry? If we can free up a three-point shoot in a corner, let's do it. A big-time shot by Nye. School record in threes. Aaliyah Nye coming up with one at a perfect time. That one went in and out for Tinson. She wanted that one. Great look there. And now the Alabama faithful cheering on this Crimson Tide group out of Tuscaloosa. We've got an empty corner ball screen. Uh, good again, Christy Curry. Back to back good play calls. This time it gets her a foul call because of the empty corner action. Off the sideline, out of bounds. Ali and I is going to get screened by the screener and just pops herself free. That's exactly what Christy Curry drew up. If it wasn't there, I got to think she was going to go to a middle ball screen. And Sarah Ashley Barker on the sidelines for most of this game as an assistant coach says, that's the depth that we play with. Christy Curry told us, everybody has to step up another three or four points today. So far, so good. A couple of free throws made at the line by Loyal McQueen. That forces Florida State to take one of their two timeouts. And a 30 second timeout taken on the floor. So both teams have one timeout remaining. A two possession ball game. Alabama with the lead. If you're Florida State and looking into the huddle, what does Brooke Wyckoff draw up here to have some success in this possession? Get aggressive and get aggressive real fast. I mean, Alabama, the one thing you don't want to do for Alabama is give up a three right now. A two doesn't kill you, but a three makes it a one possession game. If you're Alabama, you stay outside that three point line. You try to guard the ball with vengeance. Again, both teams are in the bonus. If you're Christy Curry right now, you're reminding your team where we are with timeouts, fouls, all those things. But the most important part right now, don't give up a three. Florida State has a lot of good action. They got a sideline out of bounds themselves right now. And you got multiple kids that can knock down a three, but Alabama's in good shape if they don't give up a three-point shot on this possession. Well, Sarah Bajetti has three of the five threes. And Omaria Gordon, who grabs her right knee, she goes down on that drive, grabbing that right leg right there. And this is not what you want to see. As Gordon being tended to by the trainer underneath their own basket. And Brooke Wyckoff going over to check on her junior point guard who's been an X Factor. I mean, she told us, look, the emergence of Amaria Gordon this season has helped the Florida State Seminoles get here, and it's good to see her walk off under her own power. Now the trainer massaging that calf would appear to be a cramp. That's normally how you treat a cramp. Hopefully that's exactly what it is. 
Indeed, now we've got Berger on the other end at the free throw line. Deljane Williams to shoot two free throws, and that makes it a three possession ball game after hitting the front end of two. A 92% free throw shooter, and she knocks down both. And Latson quickly going to the hoop, loses the handle, rather stripped away last by the Crimson Tide. I think they're gonna look at it right to make sure they got the out of bounds call correct. So they will go over and review this. Oh, ruling on the court is Florida State basketball plays on a review. Well, it looked like Latson initially lost the handle on it, but the call on the floor was Florida State basketball. Well, and a smart job by, oh, if there's no foul called there, that yep. ball may be off Florida State, right? The yep. reach in by Berger right here. The deflection, uh, but that last yeah. little bit there, I think it's off of Latson. Tiffany, a really good job by Christy Curry to get the attention of the officials to say, hey, go check the monitor. It gives her a chance to talk to her team about what we want to do defensively. It saves a timeout. But I think it also has a great chance to reverse this call. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and they're looking it over. Yeah. And a quick review. After review, the ruling on the court is overturned. It's off of red, double zero. The ball will be Alabama's with 31 on the game clock. Christy Curry, over 500 career wins. She's one of 10 in the women's game to win 100 different games at three different schools. And you're not gonna let one slide by when you've won that much at the highest level that she has. And a good job to get the attention of the officials to check it, get the call reversed. And now quickly, if you're Florida State, you're looking to try to steal it away or get the foul instead. Alabama is able to push it up. And finally, the foul there from Alexis Tucker, one of two seniors for this Florida State squad, both Tucker and Sarah Bajetti. We've had tremendous careers. Alexis Tucker, who transferred in, Sarah Bajetti, who's been with this group for a little bit as well. She started her career at Arizona State, but the Seminoles seeing their season come to a close. Remember, they were bounced out of the first round last year against Georgia and here. Tiffany, think, think of the coaching job that Christy Curry has done today. Sir Ashley Barker might as well not even have been here because of the foul trouble. She was no factor in the game. And for them to go without their all SEC performer and everyone step up and for Christy Curry to keep the belief and the confidence in her kids when Sir Ashley Barker was in foul trouble the entire ball game. Man, what a job by Christy Curry on the big stage to manage foul trouble, keeping confidence in her guys, running that ball screen offense, trusting her guards to make play, changing the defense up just enough, tightening up the loot, the live ball turnovers, not letting Florida State get out to their run game. And they are 20 seconds away, the Crimson Tide are advancing as an eight seed to take on the one seed, Texas. And now the emotions of March start to show up all over the place in this tournament. Well, Alabama will go on. They're 20 seconds away from going on to face off against the number one seed, Texas. Maddie Booker had an all around game. And then, whoo, Shaylee Gonzalez, though, tied her season high of 21 points. She went off as well. And the Horns ready to go for Saturday's second round matchup. Definitely, I saw Sarah Bajetti walk off the floor for the last time in that Florida State uniform. Just, man, the emotion, the feelings that go in when you pour yourself into something, you see it coming to a close. It's hard to put into words. I've been there as a coach and see your kids go off for the last time, and it's tough, but that's what makes marching this tournament so special. And the Alabama Crimson Tide out of the SEC, an outstanding job, their depth stepped up. The inside presence of Essence Cody's a true freshman ultimately changed the game. 
Sarah Ashley Barker, no factor. Christy Curry, a Hall of Fame coach, in my estimation, a major factor. And roll, tide roll, rolls into round two on Sunday here in Austin. Well, this group will make it to the second round for the second consecutive year. And Christy Curry's group with an 82-74 victory.